My name is my name is Tom Zanussi, and I'm a, a software engineer at Intel, working on the Octo project, um, mainly in the area of the kernel and uh, tracing and profiling and things like that. And today, I'm going to be talking about working with the kernels in the Octo project. Um, really, with the mic, I need to talk louder. Okay, is that better? Okay, um, so I'm going to uh, start off with an overview of, of what we have available in Yocto as far as kernels go. And, uh, um, and then I'll go into a little detail about each of the different recipes we have available. Um, and then uh, following that, uh, sort of a, uh, a little bit of guidance about which, uh, when to use which one of those. Um, and then I'll go into um, a couple of practical topics, such as uh, working in recipe space versus working in, in tree in the, re in the kernel repo, and using local clones. Um, I just wanted to point out that everything that I talk about here is covered in a lot more detail in the kernel manual. And if you have any questions at all about working with the kernel, um, you should be able to find it in the, in the kernel manual. Um, and if not, we'll add it if there's anything in there that's not clear. Um, I also like to point out that um, this, uh, everything I talk about that's, that's um, um, related to the current version of Yocto, which is 1.3 or Danny, is, um, is covered by, uh, by a set of hands-on labs that I've just recently updated. Um, and they're available at this link. Um, in past dev days, what we did was we had, um, we brought in a bunch of machines, and we had people sit at those machines and work through the kernel lab. Um, and uh, uh, to get a sort of hands-on experience with working with all of this kind of thing. And what we did this time was we decided instead to just have to cut it in, uh, in, to uh, half day and make the, the kernel labs uh, installable on your own machine and, uh, and uh, had much better instructions to allow you to, to do that on your own. Um, and and uh, as, a, as a side effect of that is that we actually, I was able to expand those labs quite a bit. So now there are five labs instead of three. And, and, uh, and I think they should cover most of what everyone, uh, mo most of what people want to do in a really hands-on practical way. So if you want to look at those uh, labs and even start working through them now and ask questions later um, on in the day uh, or in the week, um, that would be great too. Um, so uh, basically, the first thing I want to say is there's really no such thing as a Yocto kernel. We don't have a team of 100 developers working on uh, the Octo kernel like Red Hat does. And uh, uh, essentially, we have a small team that, that uh, sort of manages a, a set of Yocto kernel repos. Um, and uh, one of our recipes is called Linux Yocto points to that, uh, those Yocto kernel repos. Um, those repos are essentially based on uh, upstream kernel, uh, the kernel.org kernel, um, and then we merge in Linux, uh, the stable kernel. Um, and even LTSI into those kernels um, as they become available. Um, as such, the, the, what's in there is the patches that we put in there are essentially sort of uh, there to bridge the gap or um, things that are, are expected to eventually end up going up, upstream. Um, and and um, um, so those are the, and, and there are a bunch of branches in each repo that are sort of machine specific branches. And they're all based on the base branch. What I'm talking about is the base branches. We, we don't put in, in typically put in things that are, uh, um, that are experimental or whatnot. Um, but th uh, we, uh, we, the, the, the other branches that we have in the repo, the BSP Spurger branches, are there specifically for that purpose, though. Um, so those, the, whatever's in those BSP specific branches, don't, it's not expected to go upstream. And, and anybody who's, uh, uh, done a BSP knows that um, in order to get certain things working on a machine, you need to basically add ha hacks all over the place. And um, uh, obviously, those are not meant to go upstream. Um, I'll get into a little bit later what what the, the this this uh, these repos actually look like. Um, so the lin the so we have the the Yocto kernel repos that we maintain, and then we have the the Linux Yoc the, the Linux Yocto recipe that adds machinery and a set of metadata on top of that that's, uh, that would be, that's meant to be useful for building up your own uh, configurations and so on, your own kernels. Um, 
So in a sense, I guess it, it, would, it would make more sense to say that what we have in Yakta is a meta kernel, not necessarily a, 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 a kernel. And that kind of map, that, that kind of uh, goes along with, with uh, the idea of what Yakta is, uh, with Yakta itself, in that um, you can look at Yakta is not a distribution; it's more of a meta distribution. So um, in that sense, we have a, a, a meta kernel instead of a kernel. Um, so those 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 uh, Yakto kernel repos, there are three of them at any one time. One of them is uh, right now in, in Danny 1.3 version of Yakto, we have three dot, uh, kernels that are based on uh, 3.2, 3.4, and um, current Linux master, which is what Linux Lin, uh, Linux Yakto dev that recipe points to. Um, in three dot, in 1.4, which is coming up pretty soon. Um, we'll have a 3.4 kernel. We'll get rid of 3.2, and we'll move to 3.4, 3.8, and again, Linux Yakto Dev, which is continue to attract Linux, uh, Linux Master. Um, the LTSI kernels are actually we 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 work to schedule our kernels on the same sort of uh, cadence as LTSI now, and so when LTSI becomes available, we actually merge. Um, LTSI kernels into the, the Linux Yakto kernel, and we've done that. The last LTSI release was 3.4, and we've merged the LTSI 3.4 release into the Linux Yakto 3.4 repo. So if you use any of the branches in there, you automatically get LTSI um, by doing so. Um, so those are the, those are the repos that are, are, are managed by Linux, the, uh, the Yakto kernel team. Um, um, but you don't have to use those. You can use essentially you can use any kernel that you want to, and we provide certain uh, a set of recipes for doing that. Uh, Linux Yocto custom recipe uh, uh, with Linux Yocto custom recipe, you can ha you can point that at any Git repo that you want to, um, uh, along with a def config of your own, and, and get that uh, kernel into your your image. Um, we also have um, traditional tar tarball based recipes. That handle only tarballs, and uh, I'll talk talk about that uh, in a minute. Um, in starting with Yocto 1.4, you can actually point Linux Yocto custom at tarballs as well, and uh, so you really don't need to, to know anything about traditional recipes if you don't want to after 1.3. So I, I'll start with the traditional recipe, the simplest uh, recipe. Um, this kind of recipe is familiar to you if you've 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 used OE Core before. It's uh, it's, it follows a typical pattern of an OE core recipe. Um, the source UI points to the static kernel tarball, and you you change that you 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 add changes to that uh, tarball via source URI. Um, the the actual build process of building the kernel is helped along by the kernel uh, kernel that BB class, which you inherit as part of the recipe and um, the configuration that gets used in this. Uh, with a traditional kernel is exactly what you give it as a def config. So here's um, here's here's an actual example of a a, uh, a traditional kernel recipe. You can see that um, it's pointing kernel dot org mirror kernel org mirror, and it's uh, pointing at a, a static tarball. The def config is the config that is being going to be used to build to build this kernel. And below that, you can see at the source URI, we're adding a patch um, to this kernel using the source URI, which is just exactly what you do with most OE core recipes. Um, and this is a, a sort of a graphical picture of it, of, of that. I mean, it's kind of unnecessary for this particular recipe, uh, for this particular type of recipe. But I'm going to be building on this picture for the other recipes to make it uh, more clear what's going on. Um, so here's uh, on the right you have your, your kernel source code. In that case, it's um, coming from a static tarball, and you combine that with a def uh, with a dot config, which is coming from your def config monolithic def, def config that you put into the into the recipe source URI. Uh, you build that, and you get your image, your kernel image. Um, and again, that's really there's really no point to having a diagram to explain that, but um, yeah, it's a, about as simple as you can get. Um, this kind of recipe, a traditional kernel recipe, to add configuration items uh, onto that, you essentially uh, what you what you do is you uh, 
you replace the def config with your your full with the, another config. Um, and in 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 uh, in Yocto, essentially, w the easiest way to do that is to invoke the menu config task, and it brings up the the uh, kernel menu config that uh, you're probably uh, familiar with. Uh, you uh, turn your settings on that you want. Turn the settings on that you want. Save it. Um, and it gets saved into the, the, the build directory as a dot config. Take that dot config, just copy it over to your def config, and that's your new uh, configuration for that, that kernel. Um, and if you want to see what changed, you obviously the e easiest way to do that is to, um, to keep a before a picture, to keep a before version of the dot config and do a diff of the new config, and that's how you uh, get a listing of the options that, that were changed. Um, so this 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 uh, traditional kernel method is, uh, recipe is uh, essentially it's a fallback if you're using 1.3 or earlier and you have to use a static tarball. This is the way you do it. Um, as I said before, Linux Yocto Custom can actually deal can actually uh, point to a tarball. So you you can if you're 1.4 using the next version of Yocto or or later, um, that would probably be a better way to do it because not only do you get to just uh, to use your kernel tarball, but you can add uh, the other features that the the kernel tooling gives you, like uh, config fragments. And um, if you if you want to work through an actual example of uh, using a, a, a step by step example of working with a traditional kernel recipe in Lab One, um, kernel Lab One Lab One uh, takes you steps you through doing that. Um, okay, so that's the traditional kernel recipe. The next, the next progression in uh, complexity, I guess, or capabilities of the, the uh, recipes that we have available is Linux Yocto Custom. Um, it's actually pretty similar to the traditional recipe, except it allows you, um, instead of pointing to a tarball, to point to any, any arbitrary Git uh, kernel that you may have laying around or that you use, um, and def config, um, just like the traditional recipe that also takes a def config. Um, the one thing it does give you on top of that is uh, the ability to uh, to do things like config fragments. Um, and here's here's a here's an example of a config config fragment. This is these here are two um, config options, and these are exactly the same options that you would stick directly into your dot config. Except in this case, they're uh, held in a separate file, smp.cfg. So that's our config fragment, and um, to add this into to add this on top of the def config or the the configuration that we we already have, you just simply add this to your source URI, um, similar to how you would you would do the same thing with the patch, except now now it's just a, a config item instead. Um, so that's that's basically it for Linux Auto Custom. It um, to use a Linux, to, if you want to use Lin, try Linux Yocto Custom yourself, um, go into this directory. This is in the OE Core Metaskeleton Recipes Kernel Linux, um, and copy out the file Linux Yocto Custom.db. That's the Linux Yocto Custom recipe, and then just modify. There are actually some pretty good, in, uh, not extensive instructions, but pretty good instructions about how to use it inside that uh, BB file uh, itself. I um, mean, you can also look at Lab Three in the hands-on kernel lab if you want to uh, uh, go through a, a, a detailed step-by-step -step, um, example of using a, a custom recipe. Um, so this is, what, this is, is an example of what, what a, a, cust a, Lin a Linux Yocto custom recipe actually looks like. Here you can see the source URI points to, right here we have it pointing to um, the stable kernel. And um, in the, the stable kernel has a number of a whole bunch of branches, and if we don't if we don't uh, specify a particular branch, it's going to take it's going to use the master branch. Um, in this case, we don't want to use master branch; we want to use this specific Linux 3.4.y branch um, in that repo, and so that's basically what's specified here. Um, and then you can also see the the def config just as as uh, similar to the. Uh, traditional recipe, we have the def config, which is your configuration, but in this case we can also add uh, configure config fragments on top of it, which we couldn't do with the tr traditional recipe. Uh, 
Um, and here is a, 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 another picture of it, a, a picture of this, sort of building on the previous one. Again, we have the source on the right. And in this case, the source is coming from uh, the stable rep uh, Linux stable get and the 3.4 branch in particular. That's what makes up the source. We combine it with the .config and create our, BZ, create our image. Um, in this case, if you look to the left, you see that some of this configuration is, uh, most of it's coming from the def config, but some of it, like this, is actually coming from a config fragment. Um, and that's mainly the, the, the main difference between the traditional recipe is that um, not only you're pointing to a git repo, and you also have the ability to do config fragments now. Um, OK, so to, uh, so the, to, uh, to recap, we have the, the, the traditional recipe that points at a, um, a, a static tarball. We have Linux Jekta stable that points at, yeah? No, this? Yeah, this is a recipe. This is a, 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 an, a essentially an OE core recipe for the kernel. And these, on the, essentially, these are assignment um, variables in the, in the, in the, the build system. And as, uh, the build system goes through and processes the recipes and, and at build time substitutes um, the values that it finds here in, in, into the build. So if, let's see, in this case, everything we have here is just a simple assignment. Well, actually, we have, a, we have a, 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 an include statement. This is actually saying to, um, like you do pound include in C, it's, in, it's including another file. And this, this, uh, this little bit contains the machinery that, that actually uh, is behind building the kernel. Yeah, this is, these are bit variables that BitBake interprets and uh, uses in the build. So it's not, it's not a make file at all. It's just uh, sort of a standard BitBake. Yeah, it's a recipe. Um, OK, so oh, that was yeah, a little ahead. But um, So yeah, that was the Linux Active Custom, and I, um, yeah, so the Linux Active Custom um, lets you point to a Git repo, give you the commit primes, and so on. And um, the next sort of progression in uh, in recipe space for kernels is the Linux Yocto recipe. And as I mentioned before, what this is actually uh, what the, what the Linux Yocto recipes actually point to is the Yocto kernel repos that that the Yocto kernel team maintains. That I described a little bit before. Um, so those the uh, the, the Linux Yocto repos um, contain us. Uh, in addition to the machine branches, they contain uh, a set of ready-to-use objects, um, config fragments. One I've already uh, I've already described. Then you have kernel features, which are kind of config fragments on steroids. There are config fragments plus uh, source changes, patches, and uh, described in a .scc file. .scc stands for Series and Configuration Compiler. Uh, but um, that's sort of a historical name and no reason to know that. But it, it, I guess any time you see SCC, just substitute feature. This is a, essentially a kernel feature. Um, and then we have kernel types, which are um, sort of reusable collections of, of features and fragments that you can um, sort of subroutines of, of objects that you can use, reuse in, um, in uh, your kernels and, uh, and uh, you, you use them to essentially provide a, a policy or capabilities that a number of different uh, types of kernels would use. Um, so they're, they're, they're actually, yeah, just sort of, uh, I'll talk about those a little bit later, but. Um, so the, the, the Linux Yocto recipe points to uh, it points to Git clone again, just like the, the Linux Yocto custom recipe did. Um, but in this case, it points to two branches instead of the one, like the Linux Yocto custom did. 
Um, one is the machine branch, and essentially that's just the, the source for the, uh, that's used to build the, the kernel, and, and that map, that's uh, essentially a machine branch. And uh, I mean, a, a machine-specific branch uh, source code that uh, has changes uh, for that particular machine. Um, and uh, another branch, which is one, a single branch in the repo that's shared amongst all the, uh, uh, between, bet between all the, uh, the other branches, and that's called the meta branch. And it's an orphan branch that contains uh, shared objects. And by shared objects, I just mean um, a pool of config fragments and kernel features that uh, is sort of centralized in this meta branch for anyone to use. Um, it also, the meta branch also contains BSP definitions. Um, these are sort of the start, starting points for uh, a particular machine to be built. And these are actually, these are uh, kernel features as well, but they're top level kernel features. And the build system essentially looks for the, the, um, the top level kernel feature for a particular machine when it's building the kernel and finds it. And that's, it starts the process of um, everything that's included within that feature. Um, config fragments and so on, and, and the end, end result of all that is, a, uh, for instance, a, def, uh, a dot config that's used to build the kernel. Um, so in this case, uh, to add a config item uh, for a, a Linux Yocto recipe, um, because, because this is all sort of, this is in the kernel repo, uh, the most natural thing to do would be instead of putting it in as a source URI, which you can still do, uh, instead of adding the .cfg to the source URI, the most natural way to, of working with uh, a repo is to actually add the, the thing directly to the branch. So in the, in the case of uh, adding a config item, um, instead of putting in the source URI, you would just commit it to the meta branch, and, and it would be available for anyone else, for, you, for your BSP to use, I mean, for your kernel to use, and anyone else to use. Um, similar case with patches. I mean, we, we, the Linux Yocto, if you're working with the repo directly, the most logical thing to do is to, um, to add the, just like you would if you were developing locally for your, uh, the, developing a kernel uh, on your own machine, is you would uh, modify the code and check it into the, 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 the kernel repo directly as a, as a commit to the, to the branch you're working on. Same thing here, the most logical thing to do would be to um, add it directly to the machine branch um, but you don't have to, you, again, if you're more comfortable using a source URI as, as, uh, as you do in other open and better recipes, that's fine. Um, that, that still works. And um, you can also actually add it, add a, add a, add a uh, patch to the, uh, the machine branch from the, the meta branch using a patch command in the SCC file. But um, I won't talk any more about that right now. If you want to use, um, if you actually want to, uh, uh, Walkthrough of working with the the Linux Yocto kernel. Um, you can look at Lab Two, and 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 that'll show you how to do that, as well as other things like uh, uh, work with modules and so on. So this is a, here's a, here's a, here's another another example of another recipe. This one I think I already went over this one, thinking I was going over the previous one, but uh, Linux Yocto custom. But this is um, Linux Yocto recipe. This is actually the recipe that's in OE Core uh, meta branch. Um, and this is sort of the base recipe that gives you default branches to work with. It's naming a branch that's going to be built by default. And the source URI, as you can see, doesn't point to, it points to a Git repo, but this repo is actually one of the Yocto maintained kernels. Um, and it's, uh, again, I mentioned that it uses two branches. One is the machine branch, and then the meta branch is the other branch it uses, and by default that's called Meta. Um, so that's that's the that's what you get um, without any modification. Typically, when you are creating your own kernel, you want to add modifications, um, and you would normally you do that via BB append, and this is a, a BB append for uh, Linux Yocto 3.4, um, an, an example of a BSP that um, that exists in Meta Intel. Um, and you can see um, what it's doing is it's uh, it's overriding the the default branch and using uh, this branch, which is dedicated to that particular machine, Sugar Bay. And it, the other thing it's doing is it's um, 
it's using one of the kernel features that I mentioned from recipe space. You, this is one way to do it. You could also directly include this feature um, in the repo itself, but this is just to show that you can do this from recipe space if you want to. Um, so it's appending a feature called i915, which is graphically uh, a graphic feature, graphics feature required for this particular machine. Um, and then here's here's uh, another picture of here's a picture of the Linux Octa 3.4 way of doing things. Um, again, the familiar on the right. The here's the branch that's actually built. In this case, it's uh, a machine branch, common PC. Um, inside the Linux Octa repository, and we have uh, the config that's built with it to produce the image. Um, but you can see here that, um, as with Linux Octa Custom, it's pulling config fragments from uh, from outside of the configuration. Um, the big, the difference here is that those config fragments are not any longer um, just uh, that config fragments on the source URI. They're actually um, in this library of objects in the in the meta branch that um, anyone can use. So in this case, um, you can see a common PC. This is actually defining. This is actually the the top level feature that starts to build off, and it's adding some basic uh, feature uh, options for for that architecture. Um, and below, you can see um, it's also making use of the i915 feature, and um, it's adding these config options. Into the config, end up in the the final config, but this it's also touching the code itself through a patch. So it, this sort of uh, demonstrates the uh, utility of features, like graphically, I guess, because it, it's it's touching not only configuration but source, and that's meant that's sort of meant to depict that. Um, and this is a, this is a, the same thing, a little more realistically. I, I just mainly mainly wanted to show that um, the the repo, the Linux Actor 3.4 repository, has an, a bunch of branches, and you know when we do a build, we're just choosing one of those. So in this case, our common PC branch, um, and one one of the uh, BSP uh, features is being is the thing that actually uh, is building that particular branch. If we were to switch over, switch the build system over to using to uh, the QMU PPC32 machine, this branch would be built, and it would use it would start using this top-level kernel feature. Um, so th that's th th those are the basic set of the the the, uh, the base set of recipes. Um, in 1.4, there's another uh, a neat feature which allows you to. Um, if you saw uh, here, we only have one meta branch. That's the only. S that contains all the features um, that are available to this uh, uh, to the to build these branches. Um, there's nothing else besides those, or you can you can use this uh, obviously a source URI append. But um, in 1.4, you can actually add more uh, sources of kernel features. So you, this allows people to reuse and share kernel features from anywhere essentially. Um, and just quickly, um, how that's enabled is how, how you do that is add your, the, just add, add add the new meta branch to source URI. Here we're adding two new sources of kernel features, and we're naming them um, feet one and feet two. And then down below in in our recipe, we're actually um, using the kernel features append to pick and choose features from each of those branches in addition to the one that's available with the, the repo itself. So we haven't used them this much but um, yeah, but it should be pretty useful in the future. Um, and here's what that looks like graphically. Again, here's our single meta branch and uh, uh, the, the, the source being built and the, the uh, configuration that comes from that meta branch. But then we also have these meta branches that are being added on top. They contribute config fragments as well to the final image, the configuration of the image. Um, so, uh, okay, so just to recap, the, the three different types of three different types of recipe: traditional recipe, um, essentially meant to use uh, with tarball, uh, static tarballs, and then we have Linux Yocto Custom, which is very similar, except you can point that at any arbitrary Git repo. 
Um, both of those use def configs. And um, then we have the Linux Yocta, which points at the Yocto maintained kernels. Um, and it, it gives you a whole bunch of things uh, beyond that, including the ability to, to do config fragments and, and features. Um, and, um, and it also has a pool of config fragments features that you can, okay, yeah? Right. <laughs> yeah, that's well. The way, yeah, that's a good point. Um, you, you know, you can turn on one config item, and then when you look at the dot config, you have a whole number of other things that get pulled in, and that's the way we do it. I mean, there's no magic to it. I kind of described earlier, what we typically do is um, use the menu config, do a diff between the two. So you, you do the use, you, you actually, um, when you're uh, setting up these config items, uh, config fragments, um, essentially you you go into the working directory and you build, uh, you actually uh, do make menu config from there, it brings up the, the menu, uh, the, the config menu, and then you obviously you've saved off the dot config from before, and you have your new dot config and um, do a diff of those, and that's what you put in the fragment. Oh, so you mean you're, you're talking about taking a config fragment from like the 3.2 kernel and moving it to 3.4? Or even just something that's different BSD. I think it's just a question about how you make these different features composable. Because you can't, yeah. test, you can't test the sort of the N squared combination of right. whatever. So um, the you know, and, and you have your cascading effects. So uh, is that really Yeah, you're getting at both. Yeah, I, mean, I don't have a good answer for that. I mean, you know, we have run into cases like this where um, you know, we have a, a, fra a fragment that works fine in one place, but then we use it in a, in a slightly different situation, and you see that, well, it, it requires this um, instead. So th those solutions so far has just been create a, a, another config fragment for that un under those conditions, but yeah. I'd Yeah. Um, well, I mean, yeah. I'm. It, it, I mean, there's a there's a uh, a config check um, a config check task that gets run that that is basically essentially match it, that checks what you specified versus what was actually um, produced in the dot config, and if they don't match, it'll spit out warnings, and it, and if it's severe enough, um, like the the. Uh, uh, the config option no longer exists, for instance, and um, it'll actually stop the build, saying, "Okay, well, this, this config option no longer exists." Um, assuming you want to know that and and stop the build, but so yeah, I, it, we can talk about it more. I mean, Bruce is—I don't know if Bruce is here, Bruce Ashfield. Um, but he'll be here later on, I guess, and um, he's kind of the guy who, uh, who, who actually wrote a lot of the underlying um, uh, config merging and checking and all that stuff. So he might have a better answer than I do. But um, well, have, there'll be plenty of time afterwards if you want to talk about that. Okay, so um, I guess when to use which is. Uh, I, Okay. Um, yeah. So the tar. If you have a tarball, 
essentially you're gonna you're gonna uh, want to use a traditional recipe unless you're using 1.4, but you can point to Linux Auto Custom, um, Git based kernel that you just want to get up and running quickly, the def config, point it. Point Linux Yacht to custom at that, and, and you should uh, immediately get your uh, kernel up and running. Um, and that also gives you config fragments, et cetera. Um, and if you can possibly do so, consider moving your kernel to Linux Yacht. Um, you get uh, certain benefits from doing that. Um, one of them is that, and I'll show you in a minute concretely what that looks like, is the your... your uh, Code will automatically get updated with uh, fixes, security fixes, and um, the latest uh, stable kernel uh, continuously merged into that as well. Um, and again, you, you also get access to this uh, set of uh, config, feature, config and feature pool in Meta. Um, and one, you, you don't have to. Uh, you don't have to commit to uh, doing it right away. You can actually do most of but you need to, pretty much everything you need to do in recipe space first if you're more comfortable doing that, and then move it over into the repo. And I'll uh, show you an example of that in a minute. Um, I, but I just wanted to, uh, to to show you exactly what features were uh, available um, currently in the the Yocto kernel. This is the uh, the meta branch uh, contains uh, uh, config features, BSP directories, and so on. Um, this is just the features, and I'm not going to go into uh, details about what all these things are. I mean, uh, it should be self-explanatory what a lot of these things do. Um, just wanted to give you an idea of, of sort of what's available in, in, the, in the, the meta branch, uh, the features specifically. Um, I'm just diving into one of those features as an example. Um, the I-915 feature, it's a... Uh, uh, there is, it consists of two files, essentially .cfg and .scc file. The .cfg is just a config fragment, like I described, a set of uh, config options in a file. The .scc file is actually the feature file, and that's what you see down here. And it, it contains a bit of metadata describing the feature. Um, and it, at the end, it, this kcomp essentially is an include, saying to include the config. Um, and that's to give you some idea about what a feature IP looks like. Doesn't, this one doesn't have any source, but most of them do. Um, so yeah, that's another point is that the config fragments, features are actually a superset of config fragments, so they don't, a degenerate case of a feature would be a, a config fragment. Um, so the other thing I wanted to point out, to show was just how the, the, the branches in Linux Yocto do get continuously updated. Here on the left are uh, all our branches uh, that are in the 3.4 uh, repository. Um, these are machine branches here. And you can see in the middle that there has been activity. The most recent activity has been uh, to essentially merge the stable kernel into all these branches. And that's what 3.4.28 is, is where the stable kernel is, or was at this point in time 11 days ago. And Bruce Ashfield is. Uh, a member of the Yocto team that actually does the actually does the uh, uh, maintain the repo, so he does all this work and um, and you can also see here there's LTSI branch, um, so that's available in the repo. And what it does, what this doesn't show is that you know because it's showing only the latest commit messages is that the LTSI branch has actually also been merged into all these branches. So if you use one of these branches, you get the benefit of uh, saying that you're using LTSI kernel. Five minutes? Okay. Um, so this, uh, yeah. I'll skip this one, and for the time being, I kind of talked about it already. Um, difference between recipe and space and repo space, that you can do things in the repo or the recipe space and sort of transfer those back and forth at will, um, just giving you an idea that you can, you, you know, you can uh, do whichever you want. You don't have to commit to any one way. Um, the final thing I'd like to cover, I guess, would be um, using local clones. And this is sort of a, talking about development workflow. Um, you know, if you're, if you're used to building your own, working with your own kernels, what you typically do is you, you know, go grab a 
clone Linus's uh, kernel or the tip kernel, uh, um, Ingo Molnar's kernel, whatever, and check that out. And then you um, check a branch out and modify the code um, and commit it, and then rebuild your kernel, make make BZ image, make uh, modules, and reboot your kernel, and that's the, sort of the normal workflow. Um, in the Yocto environment, if you want to do the same thing, it's, it's, it's not much different, really, except that you're using bitbake wrappers around things. Um, but one thing you do need to do is to um, use a local, what, what you normally would want to do is use a local repo um, to actually do your work in. And the way you do that is it's, there's really not much to it in, in these recipes, like Linux Yocto Custom or uh, Linux Yocto. You, um, here's, here's your normal source URI uh, 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 that's, that's pointing to a Git repo out there somewhere, the stable kernel. Um, and if you want it to uh, work locally, you'd clone that kernel. And then um, I've cloned it to this location here. Um, well, this is actually a different one, but it's a local kernel um, that it's on my local file system. And, and I, uh, I also changed the protocol from git to file. And um, then the build system should be able to find the, uh, um, the kernel repo on my local system. Um, and typically, what we do when we're, we're working with the uh, kernel in this way is you create um, a local clone, create a bare local clone, and this is essentially um, create a bare local clone, and then you create a working clone, a local clone of that, and then um, you actually point the recipe at the bare clone, and then you do the work uh, in the local clone, push it to the bare clone, and then rebuild. So um, that's the basic workflow. Here's uh, here's how you actually go about creating those clones. Use bare. Um, to clone whichever kernel you want locally, and then you clone that one. This is where you work. This is where the recipe points. And the workflow is some, uh, pretty much this. CD into the work repo, edit your, uh, edit your um, uh, kernel code, commit the code into a new commit, push from the work clone into the uh, bare clone, and then just build and uh, build the kernel, and you're good to go boot up run QEMU or whatever to test it out. Um, so that's a bear clone. Uh, you don't strictly need a bear clone, but um, that's, um, you can actually just do a direct clone, and then the same kind of thing, commit, edit, commit, and then um, build the kernel. But what I found when I was uh, working through, by the way, all this is in the lab. If it's one of the labs, uh, lab four, I think, that you can actually work with the local clone. But when I was working through that, I found that this wouldn't really work unless I did a clean all. And I'm not sure if that's a bug or a feature, but, um, but it doesn't really matter because you can always do this. And you know, this is what we normally have used, uh, normally use and used for a while, and this works um, just fine. So, it, and it's only one more step at, at the setup stage instead of one more step at every build. Um, so I guess I'm out of time. Um.